Hello and welcome to the OTB channel. The great thing about Linux is there are literally thousands of applications out there that can help make you more productive and much faster as far as your work is concerned on the desktop. One I've just found is called Rofi. This is what this video is going to be about. Okay, welcome back. Right, so something a little different today. Um, obviously, I did the distro review yesterday of Ubuntu Mate, and, and again, I was impressed. Today, I just wanted to kind of pull it back a little bit and have a look at something that I've been looking at over the last week or two. Rofi. What is Rofi? Well, I, I'm reading off the wiki here. It's a window switcher, a run dialog an SSH launcher, and basically a D-menu replacement. I think most people have heard of D-menu, which is the quick menu that you can bring up where you can simply type in the name of the application you want to launch and hit enter. Now, I've been using D-menu for a while, irrespective of what desktop environment or window manager I, I've been using, because I've just found it quicker to launch an application that way than to search through menus. So it's been a useful utility. But uh, back when I did my BSPWM uh, video, I'd started to look at Rofi, and, and that exploration has continued, and I'm really quite impressed with it. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you a quick overview of what the application is, talk about the different modes that you can use and show you some of the scripts that I'm currently using. Uh, before we go any further, I know I've got people out there who are always commenting on my t-shirt. Well, balm cake. Let me just explain that. This is a contentious term uh, in Great Britain uh, or the UK. A balm cake uh, is known by many names in this country. It could be a bread roll, a cob, a batch, and the list goes ever on. Here in the northwest of England, we call it a balm cake. And my wife decided to buy me this T-shirt because I was insisting it was a balm cake, and she calls it a batch. Simple as that. So let's get back into the Linux stuff. I'm going to start by firing up a virtual machine. I'll use the one that I used yesterday just to show you how to install it and the basics of how to run both Rofi and D-Menu, because they're very similar to each other. So to start this off, um, I'm just using the virtual machine that uh, I did a review of yesterday, the latest version of Ubuntu Mate. And I'm using this because my own version of Rofi on my desktop is already pre-configured. What you'll get on a new machine or when you first install Rofi and or D menu is a very, very plain looking uh, application. All you do to install, it's really quite simple. You just, on a Debian system anyway, sudo apt install, D menu and Rofi. Now I've got both of these installed already so I'm just going to put my password in. But as it says, it's already installed. So let's clear that and show you what both do before you configure them to do the clever stuff. If I was to run D menu, uh, the standard one is D menu run, which many of us were using pretty much exclusively to start off with. And what you'll see up here is it's produced a search menu in the top panel. So, for instance, if I was to start typing Firefox now, it identi identifies Firefox. I click the return button, job done. So, D menu run, enter, and you'd obviously hook that command up to a key binding. Now, Rofi works in a similar way, but rather than Rofi underscore run, you would type Rofi 
show run. And there you go. You get something very similar to what I've just shown on D, D menu. And I could again search for Firefox. Hit enter. And it does exactly the same thing. So a slight difference in commands, but it shows the menu in a different way. With D menu, it just appears at the top in the panel in its default mode. Rofi appears in a little box. That's just the starting point though. So let's leave this virtual machine now and let's go across to my desktop. Right, so we're back on my desktop now and you should see a terminal in front of you. So exactly the same thing, I, I can run these commands, Rofi, show, run, and there you go. I've got the color configured and I'll show you how to do that in a second, but the run dialog basically brings up uh, a whole list of executables that are in your path. Now, run isn't the only mode that you can run here. You've got a couple of options. You could also, rather than using the run command, type drun. And this time, we get something very similar, but rather than a list of executables, uh, we get a list of all the applications that Rofi files that have a desktop file, which is actually more useful. And you can go and add to this. You could add also show icons. I don't know if I've got the uh, syntax correct here. No, I haven't. Let me just try. There we go. Show icons. Um and suddenly you've got a nice menu. So there are lots of options, and I'd suggest in order to look at all the options, because you can configure the size and the look of it yourself, that you look at the man page. Now, I've only shown the basic application launcher uh, options at the moment, but you do have another couple of what we call modes or mode eyes built into Rofi. One of them is window, and this shows all the different windows I currently have open. So it's a window switcher, uh, a little bit like a uh, alt tab. So you can use that. What else have we got? Um, we have uh, an SSH option. So if, uh, for instance, you have an SSH config file already set up, and you can see I've, I've already set one up, I can use this to connect. So if I just click on localhost there and enter my password, I'm connected myself through SSH. Let me just exit that. Okay, what else? Oh yeah, another one that's really quite useful is you can show keys. And this shows you a list of all of your key bindings. So, really useful even in its default stage um i found it incredibly useful for making me faster as far as my well here's this word they use this workflow and i've mapped various commands to uh keystrokes in my B bspwm uh config file so i just hit super and uh space and I get that D-run dialog with all the little icons. What else have I done? Uh, let me think. Oh, yes. Um, if I wanted to do a file search, uh, I can simply bring up this. And it brings up D-menu FM. One of the great things about uh, Rofi is you can substitute, in the vast majority of the cases, the D-menu command. Now, D-Menu FM is actually built uh, to use D-Menu. I've uninstalled D-Menu, and I've sim-linked D-Menu to USR bin Rofi, and it still works. So I can go to various uh, 
directories. Uh, let me just bring up uh, one of the little scripts that's there called Cheat Sheet. And there you go. It, it's bringing up my genie with that. I have found a bit of a problem that I haven't quite got around yet. If I click on Terminal, nothing happens. However, if I run dmenu fm from a terminal and I click on terminal, it launches. Mm, not quite sure what's going on there, but I will uh, no doubt uh, get to that in the end. Uh, what else have I put on here? Right, a network manager replacement. Uh, I've got this link to uh, Super N or Super Alt N, should I say? I'm currently on a wired connection, but if I wanted to enable Wi-Fi and then search for a wireless network out there, it lets me do it very quickly. What else have I got? Um, oh, Super Z. That's my cheat sheet, which is a list of all the shortcuts that I've actually got in my SXHKD file for PSPWM. So let me just shut that. I've also installed a script called Rofi Locate. So that's currently mapped to Super V. So this just runs the locate command. And so if I do SSXHKD, uh, I should find it in a minute. KDRC, there you go. Hit that. And again, it opens the script currently up in Genie. I'm not, I think the reason it's not opening in a terminal at the moment, in Vim, for instance, is quite simply because of my settings in XDG open, which need to be tweaked a little bit. Um, what else? Oh, bit of fun. Um, how about this? Uh, a Rofi command to actually find all of the emojis that are on the system. And I can click on one of them, uh, hit enter, it copies it to the clipboard, and then I can copy it into whatever application I want. So, bottom line is, Rofi does quite a lot. And it can be configured in various ways. So yeah, that's what I've been playing with. And overall, I think it has made me faster and far more productive. I'd always used dmenu before as the basic menu system to access an application because I found it faster than going through something like the Marte menu or the open box right click menu. And just being able to hit something like uh, super space and bring up a list of searchable applications it is very fast. But I prefer the look and feel of Rofi to dmenu. Both of them can be scripted. There's not a huge amount in between them. I believe dmenu is part of the Suckless Tools package, so in terms of the lines of code within it, I'm sure it's got hardly any conferred, compared to Rofi. I just prefer the look and feel of Rofi, so I've gone with it. It can also be scripted, and that's what I found really useful for those applications I've just shown you, like Rofi Locate and Dmenu FM. If you want a script, uh, GitHub and GitLab is absolutely full of them. And you can just download them and attach them to a key binding and off you go. So I'm impressed. I'm really impressed so far. One of the things I also had in mind and, and why I've started looking at this is because I'm thinking of looking at another window manager, Spectre FM. Yes, Spectre WM, should I say. And I'm aware that it doesn't have a system tray built into uh, the bar that it uses, similar to Xmonad and Qtile. Now, I've played with separate system trays before, Stallone Tray and Trayer, and I've had terrible trouble getting the system tray to show in the right place on the bar. And I started thinking to myself, well, do I actually need a system tray? Could everything that I do or normally access from a system tray be accomplished through a, a Rofi or a D menu script? And it probably can. 
So I'm not there yet, but this is what I'm I'm exploring. But coming back to the D menu versus Rofi uh, thing, what I really like about Rofi as well is just how configurable it is. And, and let me show you how you do this. Right, so to start off with for configuring Rofi, it has a number of built-in themes already that you can use. All you have to do is open a terminal, and let me just make this a bit bigger, and bigger still, and search for Rofi Theme Selector, and run that. And what you'll actually get is this little uh, dialog box where you can pick a particular theme. So I could pick that theme, Adapto Noctu, or Android Notification, or Arc, or Dark Blue, or Fancy, or Grovebox. Wow, that's striking. Or any number, Monokai, you see the idea. And if I wanted to accept one of those themes, all I have to do is hit Alt-A, and that becomes the default from that point on. Now, you'll see I've got some warnings here. The old X-Resources-based configuration format is deprecated. Please upgrade Rofi upgrade-config. Now that's pretty important that. Apparently Rofi used to use X, Re X resources to pick a color theme, but it's recently changed. So how do you actually go about uh, setting up uh, the configuration for, for Rofi? Well, the first thing you're gonna need is a configuration file in your .config Rofi directory. You will probably have to create that. And what you would run as a normal user is rofi-upgrade-config. I will put links down in the video description to this GitHub page. This will give you a basic configuration file called config.razi. Strange, uh, strange name file. I'm not quite sure where the .razi comes from, but hey-ho. Essentially, you'll get a configuration file with opening and closing brackets. So there's nothing in it at the time, but you can fill it with your own configuration if you know what to do. If, however, you're like me, and you've got not a clue about what to configure it with, uh, you can run this command. And this will dump a pretty full configuration file into your config Rofi config.raze file. Let me show you what I've actually got from this. Uh, so if I go vim config, you will see that you get a whole range of options here that you can activate. Now, I've left this pretty much as standard. There's only a couple of things I've done here. Um, I've declared what my mode is, what modes that I can run. And you can see here that I've got window, run, dRun, SSH, combi, and keys. If you don't declare these in your configuration file, you will have to include them within your command line argument. So dash mode I dRun or whatever you're going to use. So if you put them in your configuration file to start off with, job done. Everything's commented out at the moment. So if you want to activate one of these uh, options, you remove the forward slash and the star from the beginning of each line and the forwards or, and the star and the forward slash from the end of the line that you want to use. I have also set an option here for my terminal whilst I've been trying to find a solution to why the terminal isn't opening in D menu FM using the Rofi dialog. So lots of options there for you to explore. What I have done though, I found a color scheme for Nord 
for any of you saw my video the other day, which I quite liked, a Nord.Raze file, and I've simply pasted the contents into this bot the bottom of this configuration file. And I've closed the brackets there. And that's it. That is now the default configuration file. If I was to change my color or theme that I'm using on the fly, for example, if I did Rofi theme selector and I decided what I was going to do was use dark blue and I hit Alt A to accept. And if I now run, oops, if I now run Rofi, it will come up with that theme all the time. Now, let me just shut this window. The reason it does that is because at the bottom of your config.raze file, and we'll get there in a second, it has amended or appended an entry to it. At import, USR share Rofi themes dark blue raze. So I'm going to just get rid of that. Yes, I know for the the Vim people around. I'm doing that incorrectly. I'm not, it's still hard coded in me, <laughs> doing everything like I would uh, in Nano. Um, so if I come out of that now, we're back to my old theme. Also, if you find a theme file, a config.raze file, or rather a theme.raze file, and you don't want to just paste it straight into your configuration file, you can just put that file in the same folder. And then you can reference that file either by including an entry similar to the one that we've just uh, deleted, pointing to that file, or you can use a command line option to reference the particular theme that you want to use. So that's Rofi, uh, just a little utility that I'm finding incredibly useful at the moment. I'm sure the suckless guys would direct me to D menu, which I am sure can do everything the same because it can be scripted as well. And they would point out that Rofi is probably bloated, but I've got loads of RAM and loads of disk space and it doesn't really bother me. Um, but listen, guys, a um, couple of things uh, for the more technically inclined amongst you. Have any of you an idea of why D menu FM, when I just run it from a key binding, isn't opening a terminal for me, but it will open a terminal for me if I run it from a terminal. I've tried a few things. Um, nothing seems to make a difference. Also, uh, a script that I'm quite keen to find is uh, something that will run Rofi so I can set the volume on my desktop and it would be even better if it gave me the option of uh, being able to select from what microphone I'm going to use and what audio output source uh, I want to use a little bit like uh, Pavu control but I don't know whether or not that could be scripted if you've got any suggestions please leave them in the comments guys other than that I hope you've enjoyed the video um, don't forget to join me on library and the old tech bloke Facebook group is still open. A few people have said that they, they've struggled to join. I'm not sure why, because I seem to be getting, uh, people asking to join every day. So I'm not quite sure what's gone on there, but I, I've looked at the configuration file and I can't see anything blocking. Uh, but I'll take another look today anyway. Other than that, have a great weekend. And uh, I'll see you during the week.